Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Treatment Room Podcast. I'm your host, Tessa Zolli, here with special returning guest, Jan Marini, founder of Jan Marini Skin Research. Welcome to the show, Jan. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, we're glad to have you back. I've had a couple of requests to have you back on the show. And today we're going to be talking all about men's skin, which we don't talk about often enough. And Jan, it's my understanding that this is a market that is really growing. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, you know, it's true. We don't talk about men's skincare as much as because it just has not been a real significant part of the market. But I will tell you, it really is growing. And here's some statistics that I find very interesting. Since 2004, the number of products that men use daily has almost doubled from six products to 11. Now, who would have thought that men were using <sighs> these products to begin with? So the men's market is currently estimated at about six, 12 to $16 billion, which I think is pretty substantial, but it's expected to double over the next five to seven years. And these are some, I think, rather startling statistics. I was surprised myself, but 47% of men that were surveyed agreed or strongly agreed that beauty and grooming treatments are a necessity versus only 36% of women. Now on our website, Jam Rainy Skin Research, 25% of our website traffic are men. Now you think, okay, well, that's only a quarter of the traffic, but still to me, that's very significant because I would not have thought no. that our website traffic was as much as 25% men. 14% of men are interested in advanced skincare treatments versus 7% of women. And 12% of men are interested in fillers versus 11% of women. Now, neither one of those numbers are huge statistically, but nevertheless, I would not have thought that there would have been an, an, an even greater interest from men in fillers than women. And the other thing that we find is that men have historically um, been interested in skincare products. Usually what they'll do is they'll use something that their significant other has. <laughs> they, they, and, you know, I get complaints like, you know, my, my husband or my boyfriend or whatever steals my products. But the fact is, in order for them to really commit to buying a product, they want something that's branded for them. So they may like what they're using, but they want a product that's branded with a more masculine image or something that they just find is more appealing to their market segment. And I think that's one of the reasons where it's kind of this sort of catch 22 because you say, well, it, um, men aren't really buying products. So therefore I don't know that I wanna put a product out there. And then on the other hand, is it because they're not buying products because there isn't a product out there that really represents the image? Mm -hmm. So um, I think this is an interesting time and I, I, we're seeing this huge uptick. And so hence, we came out with the men's system. Right. Well, it makes sense that, you know, everyone wants to look and feel good. And I think with more people taking selfies, being on social media, doing Zoom calls, there's just more pressure on everybody to maintain their skin. Sure. Absolutely. I'm so blown away. Men are using 11 products. I know. I was going to, now, you know, you try to think, you think about that. And when they do these surveys, that could be toothpaste. Okay. It could be mouthwash. It could be, those are, you know, in a sense, hygiene grooming products. Um, soap, of course, there's shaving cream, but then I'm still trying to add it up and I'm trying to think, okay. wow. And maybe body lotion. I don't know, but it that's a that's like let's that's, that's like the Korean skincare yeah. girl. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, and how about for any estheticians listening who are wondering how can they kind of approach the male client 
what would you say is the difference between approaching female versus male clients? Well, you know, there really isn't a difference. There really isn't any difference. Um, it's, it's, you, you start the conversation the same way. And this is how I would start the conversation with anyone. It could be working with an influencer, a celebrity, a world famous doctor. This is the question I'm gonna ask every single time exactly like this. If there was something you could change or improve about your skin, what would it be? So whether you're working with a male or female, it's what are their concerns? It's about providing a solution. Solutions are sticky. You want somebody to keep coming back to you, then you provide a solution where they feel like, wow, I can't achieve this without doing this or without this person. So it could be, and, and it could be something like, well, I have brown discoloration. I wish my pores look smaller. Um, it's typically not gonna be as much with acne because men generally don't have acne past the age of 23. They reach what's called terminal beard growth. So the re beard reaches its full diameter, pushes everything out of the follicle. So you rarely see anywhere near the number of men that complain about acne as you do females. Um, but the, the, the concern is my skin is dry. Um, all of these different concerns are no different. So it's really about focusing in on that and what makes it really, really simple is that we hand them the skincare management system. We hand them the men's system. And right there, there's takes the guesswork out of it. They've got one system to address issues. And you can always add on to that. You can always have accelerators just like you do with any of the individuals that you work with. But it starts off with that men's system. We're going to talk about the men's system and skincare management system, but I did want to reiterate what you were talking about, Jan, with the client consultation and point something out that I've noticed with men is that sometimes they have a tough time articulating what's bothering them. And maybe it's that, you know, they've never done that before. Maybe they just haven't put it into words, but I think just really being an active listener as an esthetician and making sure you're understanding what they're saying, because it can come out a little bit vague sometimes, whereas I feel like women are very clear. So, you know, for example, if you ask a lot of males, so tell me, what type of skin do you think you have? Do you think it's normal? Do you think it's dry? Do you think it's oily? They're kind of kind of go, I don't know. <laughs> so then you break it down for them. And I say, so tell me, during the day, are there areas of your face that look shiny, that look a little bit oily? What areas are though? It's just like anybody, they might say it's a T-zone, okay? So they're going to say the chin or their nose or whatever. Um, if they say they have dry skin, is your, is your whole face really dry? Do you ever see oil on your face? I have really oily skin. Is your whole face oily? You know, you can break it down for them. And it's and questions like, did you have acne as a teenager, you know, sun exposure, those kinds of things really kind of give you more insight into the kinds of concerns that they might have or what they're going to have going on. And, um, you know, when you talk about men's skin, one of the things I get asked a lot is, well, some of the differences, we talked about that a moment ago, like, for example, that men don't usually have acne past the age of 23. Um, but there's a few other things that are a little bit different. Now, men tend to have more collagen. So about 80% of the dermis is collagen. But So when we talk about men having thicker skin, we're not talking about out here. We're talking about the dermis. So a couple of things that influence that. Men tend to shave every day or every other day. Now, some men don't, but the men that do, when you are constantly shaving the skin and they're doing it without being um, inflammatory, so they're not using scrubs and things like that, they're literally, in a sense, scraping off the dead cell layer. When you do that, it encourages more collagen production. So they're constantly resurfacing. So that's one of the reasons why their skin tends to sometimes look a little bit more refined, particularly right after they shave, and they might have more collagen. Um, but the other thing is about men's skin, for example, men don't get rosacea as frequently as women, but when they do, we don't know why, it's more aggressive. And the other thing that we wanna keep in mind because we start people really young is that teenage acne 
Now, before the age of 23, when they reach terminal beard growth, the majority of teenagers are going to have acne. And with boys, it's usually more aggressive. So sometimes it's it can start younger. And when it does, oftentimes it can be much more aggressive than their female counterpart. And so these are things that we want to do. We, we don't want to put them on an elaborate system. And so I, I don't necessarily think that it would be the men's system, but getting them on benzoyl peroxide wash, benzoyl peroxide leave on, sunscreen. And those are things that can all lead into the system. But you can, can't cure acne, but you can get complete total clearing. I'm curious, Jan, because of the differences with male hormones, do you think men tend to be more oily than women? Um, not necessarily, but the fact that they have more testosterone also leads to having a thicker dermis. So it's kind of a good thing. So in, in females, when we have testosterone sensitivities or we produce a little bit too much testosterone, it shows up as acne and we get more hair on the face, less hair on the head, things like that. But men use testosterone differently. Our testosterone is bound by protein. So it has like a sack around it so that we don't get a hairy chest. We don't get a big beard. But with men, those things are normal. So it doesn't necessarily translate into some of the things that it would, would difficulties or challenges that we would have as females. That makes sense. Okay, let's <clears throat> Excuse talk me. a little bit about the system that you have designed for men. First off, like how how did you kind of decide on the products you wanted to include in the system? Well, so first of all, um, number one, we have to think about men in terms of what they do every day, which is primarily shaving, unless you're using like an electric razor. And so we wanted to do something that made that shaving process much easier, that gave people a better shave, that reduced any type of irritation or inflammation, but at the same time could double as a cleanser. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the first step where when a guy shaves and they get done and their skin feels unbelievably soft and smooth and, it, and they can look in the mirror and see a difference, that's impressive. The other thing is we want to make it something that's really simple. So you, you just put the rest of the products on one right after the other, you're done. You're out the door, you're done. Um, so those were probably the things that were uh, initially the most important. And then of course, making certain that whatever is being used is something that's going to show a significant benefit and provide a solution. You're gonna see something different. It's not just that your skin feels better, but you're going to see a significant difference in your skin. I think when it comes to shaving, a lot of men can have frustration with the process itself, with how their skin can feel afterwards, with folliculitis, mm -hmm. all those things. Can you tell us about the shaving gel and what makes uh, it unique? Well, first, you know, you kind of touched on some of the, the challenges. So there's pseudofolliculitis barbae. So pseudofolliculitis barbae it's not actual folliculitis. It's where, particularly on the neck, but any place where the beard tends to be more curly or you shave in a different direction. So for a guy to get really close on the neck, you have to shave the wrong way, so to speak. And when you do that, the hair then kind of doubles back in on itself. So when it wants to come to the surface, it's bent and you end up with little bumps. Now, that's pseudofolliculitis barbie because that's not an actual infection of the follicle. So real folliculitis is an infection in the follicle, but it can be very annoying because you can get this red, rashy, bumpy looking skin. And if you've got curly beard growth on the face, like certain ethnicities where this, the, the beard can be really curly, then you can have that problem everywhere. Um, so that's one of the issues. And then also just some people just have more reactive skin than others. My husband's very reactive. Just the act of shaving, you know, causes the skin to be red. Or if it's not enough glide, you know, he cuts very, very easily. And of course, you've, I'm sure you, if you, everybody's used to seeing a guy walk out of the bathroom, he's got pieces of toilet paper all over his face. I always wonder how come they don't end up with just scars everywhere? Because sometimes you see where it looks like they just took chunks out of their skin. But anyway, yeah. So, 
Um, and, 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 and what I found out is guys are very devoted to a particular shaving product. Like it's, if they find something that they think works for them, yeah. it's like, you cannot pry it out of their cold, dead hands. And my husband is one of those. So for him, it's edge shave gel. Now to me, I'm just looking at that going, oh my God, there's got to be something better than that. It's a drugstore product, but I mean, I'm sure it must be a really good product that works for him. But I, over the years, I bought him the art of shaving products. I bought him all these different things that were more expensive and elegant and nothing works for him the same way until the shave gel and the shave gel gives him even better glide. So when he's done, his skin just looks, it's like it looks rested. It doesn't look like he's gone through this torturous process of shaving. And it just looks so incredibly glowing and smooth, like he's just had a facial. So one of the ways that I like to characterize that is his skin looks very expensive, like he's really cared for it. He's done a lot for it. And all he's done at that point is he's just shaved. So um, this is a product that can be used to shave with, and it can be used as just a cleanser. And so the whole system is very streamlined. It gives immediate results. It gives progressive results. And um, it just, you get a closer shaving experience with the shave gel. It just leaves the skin immaculate. And ladies, it is absolutely amazing for underarms and shaving your legs and bikini area, that kind of thing. That's amazing. I think everyone really appreciates a multi-purpose product, but mm -hmm. especially the guys. And I agree. I think once they find something they really like, they they can have a big attachment to it. But just goes to show if they find a good solution, they will be loyal to you, the esthetician, for years to come. Well, we came out the we came out with the shave gel as a separate skew because of the fact that it's gotten such a huge cult following and that's probably the thing that you're going to you know use up the quickest anyway yeah yeah absolutely okay and next we have the bioclear lotion which is one of my personal favorites it's amazing for age management pigmentation acne can you tell us a little bit about the benefits for a man using BioClear? So BioClear is one of everybody's favorite products. And essentially there's three primary components, glycolic, salicylic, and azelaic acid. Now glycolic acid is a resurfacing agent. So when you look at the surface of the skin, what you wanna see is you wanna see something that's really reflective, that's really refined. You don't want to see obvious imperfections like bumpy skin or discoloration or rashy skin. And glycolic acid at the very simplest level dissolves and dislodges the glue-like substance or cellular cement between cells. And it does that without being inflammatory. It does it without being abrasive. It's actually an anti-inflammatory. And glycolic acid goes into the follicle. So most things don't go into the follicle. It goes into the follicle. So if guys have technically, which is really very mild acne, but we won't call it that, they have clogged follicles or their pores look larger. Usually it's because they have retentive matter. So it goes in there and dissolves and dislodges the glue-like substance or cellular cement between the cells and the follicle. And it causes that retentive matter then to dissipate. And so the follicle relaxes and it looks like it's it's much smaller. It looks like it's much more closed. And glycolic acid also stimulates collagen. So it helps with the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. And it just makes the skin look so much smoother. And it also helps with the appearance of discoloration. Now, azelaic acid is what we call a dicarboxylic acid. And this is um, sold by prescription for rosacea. It's sold by prescription for acne. It's sold uh, it's it's one of the best resurfacing agents we've ever seen for the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. And it's a pigment lifting agent. So again, it makes the skin look so much brighter. It makes it look so much more just radiant and reflective. And then there's salicylic acid. Now salicylic acid is just kind of a supporting player and it can make the skin look a little brighter and a little bit smoother. But when you put those three together, I've never seen anything for home care that has that capability to resurface and just make the skin look so much younger and smoother. Um, 
So that's FileClear. Yes, it's, I feel like the closest thing you could find to glass skin in a bottle. Yep, I agree with that. Yeah. Are there any issues with men shaving and then applying BioClear? Yeah, it's probably going to sting. Okay. So you should probably shave in the morning, use BioClear in the evening? No, you want to use it twice a day, but it's just, it's just, okay. it's just superficial stinging. So, you know, it's, it's something that it's going to go away rapidly, but you may feel stinging. Some people do, some people don't, but it's a superficial sensory reaction. Some people that, you know, a lot of females that aren't shaving will have stinging sometimes and sometimes they won't have stinging. So it's just, it's kind of okay. a natural reaction because yeah. it's very, it's very acidic. Okay. And, and you've kind of shared with me before, Jan, like when it comes to stinging and sensation on the skin, you're more concerned with long-term, like 20 minutes post-application. Right. Exactly. If you have truly sensitive skin and there's a test and that was actually developed by Dr. Kligman when he was alive and it's still used today. And you take a dollop of what's called lactic acid. If you put it right here, and I, and, excuse me, we're on a podcast, so we can't see, <laughs> but you kind of put it like on the inner cheek area. And if it's, if, if this, if it stings, it's considered to be normal. As long as it doesn't go beyond, I think it's like, it's either 10 or 20 minutes. And if it goes beyond that and it actually gets worse, then that's considered to be a sign of possible sensitivity or reactivity. Okay. Okay. So you've applied your BioClear. What is the final product after that? Okay. So BioClear, which is not the final, but the next product is Age Intervention Peptide Extreme. So what this does is this is going to kind of give some barrier function um, if you want to say moisturizer, but it is a product that is packed with technology and it doesn't feel heavy. So, you know, a lot of times with men, they put something on the face and we females would go, oh yeah, that's so nice and soft and skin feels smooth. And the man would be like, but I can feel something. Well, yeah, you feel something. It's moisturized. It should feel good. Um, but no, I can feel something. And so we, they're not used to that sensation. It feels like the skin is coated. So this is something that doesn't give that kind of heavy or coated feeling. And it really, it's, it's going to soothe the skin. So if they do have any singing, it's going to feel soothing. It's going to improve the skin, skin tone. And there are five anti-aging peptides in there. Some of these are exclusive to JMSR. You can't get them anywhere else. And peptides are like a little toolbox. And what they do is they communicate and they actually can um, initiate certain repair functions. So one of the things that peptides do is some peptides fool the skin, for example, into thinking that they're wounded. And what happens is that your skin produces a lot more collagen. So by producing more collagen, it looks younger. It looks healthier. Um, and also we have things like coenzyme Q10. We have green tea, red tea extract, pomegranate extract, grapeseed extract. And so this is all going to help with the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and just make the skin look very even tone. And when I say even tone, um, a lot of times when men just shave and hopefully put on a sunscreen, but the skin can sometimes not look as calm, um, as rested. So it makes this huge difference with regard to that. And um, this is a product that we found that just men in general really like the feel of it, doesn't feel too heavy, and it is really beneficial. Yeah, I've noticed if there is one most common complaint for men, it's that something might feel too heavy. They just don't like that that greasy yeah. feeling. Yeah. Whereas women, sometimes we're okay with a little more doing yeah. this. But I think and even women, you know, one of the one of the comments I get with the system is people will say, you know, yeah. I just put on I had a, a cleanser and four other products, including the sunscreen. And I feel like I'm wearing less than when I just use one or two products. So even the, the normal uh, system is designed that you don't feel like you're wearing product, but it's really, really essential for the men's system that it, it just feels like it's going in the skin. Yeah. 
anything after that, Jan? Okay, really important, final product. Antioxidant daily face protectant, SPF 33. Now, this product has always been a cult favorite with a lot of men because one of the biggest complaints with sunscreen is they put their sunscreen on, they're active, and it's like, it's no matter what they do, it ends up in the eyes. And they feel their eyes are constantly burning. Their eyes are constantly watering. This does not do that. And it, I, you know what? I didn't design it specifically that way, but there's just something about the way that the formula is, is that it doesn't do that. We hear that constantly. It doesn't burn my eyes. But the other thing about this is that it has an oil control system in it. And what, an, well, I call it an oil capture system. So when you're putting the sunscreen on, um, if your skin tends to be a little bit on the oily side, and a lot of men don't know that they are combination oily, but most people are, and particularly in humid weather, it has an unlimited capacity to pick up the oil, but not pick up the actives, not pick up water out of the skin. And so the skin just feels so nice and, and just soothed and moisturized, but you don't feel like you're wearing anything. On the other hand, if you had dry skin, it's going to make it feel very soft and silky and very moisturized. So it balances it out either way. Now, besides having um, an excellent sunscreen protection, and this goes to the end of the, the spectrum, it protects it, it, it and uh, when we call in terms of nanometers and how far down this in the spectrum you want you need to go. Um, in addition to that, this has things that go beyond what sunscreens typically cover. Because you could be wearing the best sunscreen in the world and you're going to still absorb about 3% radiation. So we want to mitigate that. And this has got some things in it that actually make a difference in terms of protecting your skin. For example, something called beta-glucan-1,3. Beta-glucan-1,3 um, has to do with um, Langerhans cells. So Langerhans cells look like little curly cues. They go to the surface, they look like a pig's tail. And your Langerhans cells are one of your first lines of defense. So they're constantly out there. They're like little soldiers that are making certain that they are able to set in motion various activities and processes to overcome environmental kinds of issues and UV radiation and all that, but they're very easily put out of commission when they come in contact with radiation. So what this does is it attaches to Langerhans cells and it helps to prevent them from being compromised. Now, in addition to that, we have something called phytomelanin. The most protective agent you've got in your skin is your own melanin. So the more pigment you have in your skin, then the less likely you are to have lines and wrinkles and you have built-in sun protection. Um, and, and so um, this is kind of like, uh, this, is, this is actually chemically identical to a, our human melanin, but it's a plant-based melanin. It comes from the date palm and it's colorless. And it's kind of like putting a blanket over your head. So it gives you a lot more added protection. It's also very anti-aging. So it's just another nice ingredient. We have other things in there that also are very, very helpful to sort of mitigate a lot of this other environmental damage and UV radiation and all of that. And again, it just feels so good on the skin. I always say that even if you, even if, if you shouldn't wear your sunscreen indoors, which you should, but even if you shouldn't, I would wear my sunscreen indoors because my skin feels so much better with it on than without it. I'm, I'm so curious about your oil capture system, Jan, because I feel like that's something you don't see in many products. Is that something that is difficult to implement into a skincare product? Uh, yeah, it can be. Um, this was actually, this oil capture system was actually originally designed um, in the pharmaceutical industry. And it was designed back in the days when they first invented something called Retin-A Micro. So Retin-A Micro is a prescription and it's off of um, patent now. But at the time, what they did, it was a time-released way of time-releasing a retinoid into the skin so that it was far less irritating or far easier to acclimate to. And they, what they found is that this, this sort of 
capture system, what they were doing to make a time release, also could be used as an oil capture system for almost unlimited ability to capture the oil selectively. Yeah. So it can't go after the water. It can't go after actives. And that's what happens with a lot of capture systems. They capture everything. They're not selective. Right, right. So this is a very, really actually a very, very complex molecule. Mm -hmm. And yes, it can be difficult to integrate it into a product. Yeah, I, I think that's great because for a lot of estheticians with sunscreens, you know, you might feel like you need to carry, <clears throat> carry multiple sunscreens, something that's mattifying or more for dry yeah. skin. And this is kind of perfect. Uh, for you got dry skin, you feel all shriveled up. I'll tell you, we had a real advantage because my uh, vice president of RD, Dr. Saxena, actually invented Retin-A Micro. He put it through the FDA. He's invented quite a few things through the years. And so he was an expert in this whole microscopic sponge technology. And that gave us a real advantage at being able to, you know, incorporate that into certain products. Very cool. Well, for any men listening who are just wondering, you know, how else they could take care of your, of their skin, whether it's treatments or possibly another product from your line, what would you suggest? Okay. So here's the thing you, you want to get on the system and the system is really exceptional for everyone. I mean, it, it's, it's a game changer. But you can also continually take your skin to a higher and higher level of skin rejuvenation. So when I use the term skin rejuvenation, it, it doesn't mean just fine lines and wrinkles, but it's it's pore size. It's, you know, evenness of skin tone. It's all the different things like rosacea or any other kinds of issues that people deal with. And so we have the products that we call accelerators or products that specifically address certain issues. So for example, everybody should be on some type of a retinoid. That is just key because retinoids um, really have the ability to address sun damage. I'm going to spend a moment on that because a lot of people who are listening don't know this, whether you are male or female. So, you know, when we talk about all the sun damage that gets programmed into your skin, here's how it works. Your genes are made up of DNA. Some of your genes are expressive genes. They express out information. It's an information sheet. It's a blueprint. If you didn't have this blueprint that tells your body what it has to do, I mean, literally everything, how it breathes, whether it's going to repair a broken bone, you know, you, you have a cold, you would be a puddle of goo on the floor. So everything is dependent on these instructions. And when you're born, they're perfect. And not only that, even though you're exposed to the sun and you have all these different things that affect those instructions that can compromise them, your body kind of does a workaround and it just works perfectly. So you're in an anabolic state and it's good for the first 20 years. Now, 20 years old, you're pretty much fully cooked and that's when the aging process starts. So it's very slow. It's not like you look in the mirror and see it right away, but it's happening internally and externally. So those instructions now, it's like the analogy you like to use. This is the one I always use. It's kind of like having a computer where everything worked perfectly and, you, you know, you might abuse that computer, but it just seems to keep on working every day. And then one day, all of a sudden, it's corrupt. Something is not working right. Now, what was it that made it corrupt? Don't know, but it's not doing what it's supposed to do. And so, in a sense, your instructions become corrupt. And that's when all of these things that happen before the age of 10, all the sun exposure, all of that environmental exposure, it's all those instructions were compromised and now it's gonna to start to show up. And so what we know, and this is a fact, this is 50 years of medical research, the right retinoid actually corrects instructions coming from your DNA. You have receptor sites, alpha, beta, gamma, for retinoids. You don't have receptor sites for plants. You don't have receptor sites for virtually anything that you put on your skin, but you do for this. And it, that's why it's able to change what they call gene expression. And you can take two twin girls, put them on the same skin, two twin boys, put them on the same skincare program. And they use, ex you know, same products, except one uses a retinoid, one doesn't. And in 10 or 20 years, one will look 10 or 20 years younger than the other, at least. And so it changes discoloration. It changes, it's a gold standard for acne. It's a gold standard for rosacea, gold standard for aging. 
And we have retinoids in different formats. If a female has acne, we have ret a retinoid in the form of duality that's combined with the acne medication. If you have discoloration and everybody's going to have abnormal pigmentation by the age of 35. So for guys, I definitely recommend every single person getting on Luminate because that's going to address discoloration and it's going to address the appearance of aging. If you just want a plain old retinoid, Retinol Plus, Retinol Plus MD. Um, there are things for volume because everybody loses volume. Hyla 3D, cream, serum, lips, mask, rosacea, rosalie. Other things for resurfacing the skin and making it look even smoother and brighter and, and younger looking and more perfected. So there's all these different things that you can add into a program. That's that's a great refresher for us. And you said the right retinoid, mm -hmm. you know, something everyone should use. In your opinion, do you have any thoughts on what would be the wrong retinoid or one that's not very effective? So when we when I say the right retinoid, first of all, I'm talking about not a department store, not a drug store. Um, so I don't want to get too technical, but First, the way that retinol works is we have receptor sites in our skin. We have an enzyme. This enzyme, everybody has it. When you touch retinol to this enzyme, you put on your skin, it immediately converts it into retinoic acid or tretinoin. That's exactly what's in the active product. When you go through a conversion, you lose something. So sometimes in order, if you're going to have a conversion, in order for it to end up being the same as uh, the prescription or whatever, maybe you need to use twice as much or three times as much or four times as much. In this case, it has to be 10 times as much. Unfortunately, retinol is actually more irritating. So if you use 10 times as much retinol to get you where you would be with the prescription, it actually is going to create more of an acclimation, far more, you have no idea. I used to joke that it can take paint off your walls. So what we've been able to do, and this is why you see very tiny amounts of retinol when you go to drug stores and department stores and things like that, not to say it's a bad product, but it's not going to get you anywhere near what you would get with a prescription. So we've been able to do that 10 times difference. We can actually get it to the the prescription or even go beyond that because we have other things in there besides anti-inflammatories, peptides, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And we've been able to do it without having the acclimation. In the study, 78% of patients had no acclimation, zero, not even what you would get with the weakest strength of a prescription. And 22% that had some acclimation, it was very minor. It was maybe a tiny bit of redness or a little bit of flakiness that's easily addressed by just using it every other night in the beginning. So what you can get is you can get something that's going to get you where the prescription is or beyond that. Right. Yeah, I, I would agree. I do see a lot of new clients who are struggling to acclimate to the seemingly more mild retinols. And a lot of times we find it's not, it's not very effective. Exactly. So, um, and I will tell you that one of the um, physicians in the study actually said a derm, female derm actually said, I will no longer prescribe a prescription retinoid to a patient unless they beg for it. Um, because this works so much better. Yeah. So, so I would agree. I, I've also had clients, you know, I've had clients use over the counter retinols and I've had them come from using prescription retinols. And I will say, of course I'm partial because I work with your line, but I just see such a difference using that. Thank you. Yeah. You know, the, the is you, you, you're able to get to the end result. You're able to have the results and you don't have to go through that acclimation. And what, how, how many times, um, <laughs> Tess, have you talked to somebody and you'll say, they'll say, you know, when you're asking them what they're using and they'll say, well, they're using, you know, retinoid gas or they're using a retin A or something like that. And you'll say, okay, well, what strength? And then you'll say, how often are you using it? And they go, well, maybe just once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. Oh, why is that? Well, right. because I just, I just peel all the time and I'm so red. And so I just, 
you know, use it once or twice a week. Um, I guess that's better than not using it all. But if you're using it for acne, you're using it for discoloration, for aging or any of those things, you're not getting the result. You're not. So you want to be able to use something that you can use every single day. And you really do see this just a huge transformation. Yes. Yes. I can definitely second that. I notice with the clients using retinol once or twice a week, it's just not <laughs> dose effective and they seemingly never acclimate. And some of them have just been purging for purging for maybe a year or so. And yeah, that's when I think it's probably time to consider a different product you can use daily. Awesome. Well, I think those are the questions I have for you, Jan, on men's skin. Thank you so much for your time. I'm glad we got uh, this. This has been this. a real pleasure. Thank you so much for having me and everybody that li listening. Thank you so much because I wouldn't be here without you. And I just um, really enjoy it. And I hope that we'll do it again soon. Thank you, Jan. Jan's been a trooper just powering through, even though she's not feeling very well. So thank you so much for oh, your time and energy. My pleasure. Well, just hopefully this, uh, you know, I'll go from this allergy to a different allergy. I have seasonal allergies all year long, but right now there's something that's really, really getting to me. So thank you so much for putting up with my coughing and until next time. Yes. Until next time. Thank you so much. And thank you all for listening. Uh, if you have any questions about Jan Marini, you can definitely send me uh, an email regarding any product questions. I'll put that in the show notes. And yep. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for coming on, Jan. <laughs>